guys, how's it going? So today I wanna to give you an update tour of our cut flower garden because I'm getting ready to plant some things and we wanted to show you what it looks like right now before we start doing more planting. The only things we have put in so far, of course, are the orchard trees in the back. But if you look back there, you can see some infrastructure going in. So we'll head back there in a minute and we'll talk through that. But I also wanna talk through irrigation, all the parts we're using this year versus last year, and then just some of our other specs and how we're measuring everything out and that sort of thing. So up to this point, you've seen the, the trees go in. You've seen all of the, like, we staked this out and kind of explained what we were doing. Aaron tilled up the four corners and then we showed you part of the mulching, which Aaron has finished up. He came out here. We had a little bit of the square interior left and then this last walkway. And we do have more mulch coming. We're gonna do 15 foot walkways around the entire exterior as well. Um, so we'll probably film that when we get around to it. I think in the end, we'll, Aaron wants to do grass walkways through the whole area which I think will be beautiful. It will make it feel and probably look cooler to have some green out here, but I kind of lean toward rocks because they're so low maintenance and so tidy all the time. Um, you don't have to worry about weeds or, especially if you use landscape fabric under the rocks, no weeds, no irrigation, no mowing maintenance. I don't know. I think my concern with uh, having gravel is that the gravel might slough into the planting areas, into the cut flower garden. And that'd be kind of, that would be a maintenance nightmare, don't you think? Yeah, probably. But the grass will grow into it as well. Yeah, but you can trim that with an edger. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We're still going back and forth on that. I do love the look of grass and I've seen gardens like that. I just look at it and think, oh, that's so much work. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so each rectangle here is 40 feet uh, wide and 60 feet deep, which is eight feet more narrow and 20 feet shorter than last year's rectangles. So I'm gonna be a little bit more choosy with what I plant, which this is a huge area. I can fit a ton in here. Last year, I grew 30 tomato plants, 1,700 feet of sunflowers. I don't even know how many pumpkins, how many pumpkin plants did I put in? Too many. So many. Talk about maintenance. I mean, it was, <laughs> It was a little self-sustaining, Erin, once we got the irrigation in. Um, yeah, we don't need to be planting that many. We're not doing this to sell anything. We give away all of our ac uh, uh, excess, rather. And then um, it's just a fun place to experiment. And we like projects. I think we thrive on the activity and improving the system. You like to improve the system. So every year um, we do something a little bit different to improve on things. And I like to grow stuff. So anyway, um, You'll notice that our irrigation setup, which this rectangle and the opposite one, opposite corner are the same. And then the other two will be different, which I'll explain in a minute. But this is how we set it up last year and I really liked it. Um, at least for the stuff like zinnias, uh, snapdragons, rudbeckia, crispidia. I mean, a lot of our cut flowers we did in this uh, kind of design. And what we have here is drip tape spaced 10 inches apart, so three runs of it, which gives us the ability to plant four rows of stuff. And four rows of stuff is usually pretty easy to reach across. If it was any wider, it might be a little difficult depending on the crop. Um, and you don't have to plant on the exterior. Uh, in fact, some of them on some of the bigger stuff like the Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus, those get quite large. So I'll probably just plant on the interior here and then let them bush out. Otherwise, if I planted in here, I mean, they would <laughs> they'd probably grow over to the other um, aisle or the other run of drip over here. So you kind of just get to know your crops and which ones take up less space and how many you can plant um, together. 36 inches between each group of drip tape here. Last year we did 30 inches. We probably should go between four and five feet, honestly, for it to be really comfortable. But I just I'm thinking like gradual. 36 inches this year, maybe next year will be 48 inches, depending on how it goes. Um, I've got all of the irrigation pieces over here, so let's run this direction, and I can show you what we're doing this year differently. First off, so I've got my little caddy here. This is from Gardener Supply. It's like an herb growing container, but I use it because it's got all these little cubbies, like right here. These are all the seeds that I can direct sow right now. It's supposed to be 64 today, 71 tomorrow, and the next 10 days we have one night that's 32 and the rest are above freezing. So I think I'm actually gonna start planting either today, this afternoon or tomorrow. And that's kind of why we wanted to get this tour going so you guys could kind of see this in incremental stages because really a lot has gone down in this space. And then this little group right here are the seeds I still need to sow inside at the end of this month. Anyway, I've got all the parts for irrigation right here and Aaron has written out what they all are because I would never remember the names. 
First off, the drip tape we used is called P1 Ultra. So it's 5 8 inch, it's 15 mil, which there's different like thicknesses, right? There's uh -huh. 15 mil, and what was the other one you uh, had? I think you can get it down to 6 mil. Which is really thin. You uh, probably have Very to disposable. Like yeah. you'd use it one, maybe two seasons. Is there a huge price difference? Um, you know, I don't know. We tend to go for things that we could possibly reuse, which all of our drip tape from last year, most of it was good still. Mm -hmm. um, so we're able to reuse. Uh, we also use the drip tape that has the emitter holes every six inches that emit 0.33 gallons per hour. We tried out both the six inch spacing and the 12 inch spacing last year and the 12 inch just didn't work well for us. Um, like I used it in the dahlia area because that's how far I was spacing my dahlias apart was every 12 inches. And so I thought, well, this is efficient. I won't waste water this way. I, for some reason, it just did not work. It was like emitting water in some areas and not emitting water in others. The coverage was just really spotty. And so we ended up pulling it up, putting six, six inch in. After that, I had no problems whatsoever. So that's what we're using exclusively at this point. The next piece right here, this is a pressure regulator, which you need to have from your main water to this tubing right here. So we don't have anything actually hooked up to live water yet, um, hopefully in the next week or two, but you need to have this between your live water and this, otherwise you'll start blowing pieces. The pressure will be too much. So this one is a 15 mm -hmm. PSI. You need them between eight and 15, I think. So yeah, it says 15 PSI. And they have to go in one way. You see the arrow? So the water, live water comes in this way. Mm -hmm. And then you adapt it down to your half inch tubing right here. So anyway, this is what the first piece that we use. And then what we're using this year, let me show you, let's set this down. So this is a permalock takeoff adapter. So it's got a 5 8 inch right here. This is where our drip tape goes on. So you slide the drip tape on and then you screw it on with this piece right here and it just locks it in place. And then right here you have a 3.6 um, millimeter, barb. millimeter, is it millimeter? Yeah, millimeter, Mil barb. Barb, so this right here, pop, well you can see it. It pops right into our tubing, right, that, right there. And you can see where the drip tape goes on right there. The benefit to this one is that it's got a shutoff valve. Last year, let me show you last year's. So this is what last year's looked like. No shutoff valve. Um, it's still got the 5 8 inch for the drip tape. This end looks very much the same. Um, but you can see how much bigger this one is. This one went into our 3 quarter inch line. So last year we ran, ran 3 quarter inch tubing rather than half inch. Um, so we're hoping that by using the smaller, the smaller line and the smaller adapter, we hope the flow issues are the same. I mean, you, you kind of are the mind behind. Yeah, I, I think um, I kind of bought the other ones on accident last year and we just went ahead and used them. I, I actually intended, I intended to get this one last year and they were either out or something. Um, so they we went worked. ahead, we, yeah, they worked. I wasn't very happy with the distribution of water. And I think that, I think that that might've been the culprit. Like it was allowing too much water in the, the, beginning part yeah. so like where our live water came in I, I correct me if I'm wrong Aaron but like if your live water came in here it it seemed like we had a ton of water on this side but then when you got to the further rows yeah. the distribution just wasn't as, as even mm -hmm. so we're hoping by necking it down like from the gate yeah our runs are smaller so again this is the half inch tubing right here we're gonna have a box right here on this corner so the run is actually not very I mean, you can run that half inch tubing for hundreds of feet and mm -hmm. we're only running ours for 40. Yeah. Um, so I think the distribution would be better with the smaller barbs and with the smaller um, tubing. So, you know, the half inch instead of the three quarter. I, so I like this. Hope for the best. Yeah. I think, I think that, that this valve, is going to be. They're a lot more expensive. Well, a little more expensive. And I think this would have saved. I mean, when you're talking about the ability to save a crop versus not being able to save a yeah, crop. Yeah, if you notice that one line is getting too much water, you can just turn off that one line. Or turn off the middle, the middle row, yeah. you know, so that you can just neck down the amount of water a little bit. Last year I grew uh, paper daisies and um, straw flowers, which as you know, if you've grown those, they're drought tolerant. They want to be in dry soil and I couldn't control it. I mean, I could have, I guess, cut the drip tape and hand watered, but we didn't have any hose nearby. It wasn't efficient. I didn't have the time for that. So if I can simply come over and shut one off because I'm like, well, I think that crop's getting too much water. Or maybe I just want to shut it off for a week or so and let the soil dry out, you know, and then turn it back on. I'll have the ability to do that. And these are reusable. I mean, these are heavy duty. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are too. Mm -hmm. So I think like, we'll hang on to these. And if we need to switch back or, or modify something, 
then we can go back to this. Okay, so for the end of the run, so the water will originate there, or no, sorry, this is for the drip tape. The water originates here. When it gets down to the very end, this is the end cap right here. So you just slide the drip tape on the same way, screw this piece on to pinch it on, and then this is just the ender. The water will stop. The nice thing about this is that you can easily- Flush it if you need yeah, to. Yeah, you can take this, <laughs> geez, this end off, and you know if you've got something in your line, you can flush it out. This is what we used last year which they worked. I mean, you put your drip tape through this skinny side, you pull it out, fold it up, and then just kind of pull this back on itself. It kind of like crimps the tape in there. But I had a little bit of issue with these blowing off. I don't know if it's like the heat messes with stuff or, or what, but um, by the end, I mean, we had it pretty worked out to where it wasn't blowing off anymore. But in the beginning, I would find like a huge lake at the uh, bottom end of one of my runs of drip tape and I'd find that one of these had blown off and it was just spewing water. So to have something that's more solid that I can trust a little more is really nice. So those are the pieces we are using. And then just for year. anybody who's curious how you get these on, there's a punch tool that you can use to uh, punch a hole into your half inch. And then this just kind of snaps into, into place once you've got your hole in there. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put links for everything we used down below. We got everything from uh, Drip Depot. No affiliation, just that's the that's website we I used from. to order it from. Um, okay, so the other two corners, this one's going to be different because this is our vine crop corner this year. We'll probably move things around a little bit every year. Um, we are going to actually move this drip tube in a little bit as well. But we'll run a grid system of just the black solid tubing, and then wherever we plant a hill of melons or pumpkins, we'll pop in an individual emitter. Last year I just used one one gallon per hour emitter on everything and that worked out really well. We will have two zones to this area though. I think the smaller kind of rectangle up there, I'll plant some melons up there and I'll have the ability to turn off the water about like end of July, mid to end of July to let those melons start condensing their sugars and so that they're wonderful, they taste really wonderful. Last year I had everything on the same watering system. I couldn't break it apart. So I just had to just water everything to keep the pumpkins and vine, other vines happy. The watermelons got a ton of water too. And it was hit and miss. We got some good melons and some of them were really watery. So um, it'll be nice to have the ability to shut them off individually. And then if we walk this direction, which, you know, I thought I would come in here and tighten up the mulch line, but I probably won't because we'll have plants just kind of encroaching on this space. I think it would probably be a waste of time in the end. But here in the center, we would like to put a fountain at some point, like right in the middle. So that's what you see from all of the different openings. Probably a 10 foot basin, I'm guessing. We did, um, we drew out an eight foot circle and it was just a little bit too small. So we'll probably do a 10 foot basin. And then I'd like to do benches in each one of these corners. We might end up rounding the corners too, making it a circle rather than a square. Although the square looks really nice. Yeah. We could even make the square a little bit smaller if we wanted to, but I think a bench with a couple of large containers um, would be really nice. But that would mean that this would be kind of unused unless we really back- plant some stuff, put some roses back there or something. Ooh, that'd be pretty. Yeah. Or like lollipop trees. Yeah. Just something that wouldn't cast shade, but yeah. that would be, I like the way your mind works. <laughs> I like it. Um, this corner right here, you can see we're getting ready for dahlias. So we've got our tea posts in. Huge thank you to Paul. Like, okay, so uh, Paul has been working with us for about a year now. Mm -hmm. He was um, the, really the one in charge of the cut flower garden last year. He's the one who kept it weed free. I mean, I did a little bit here and there, but it was it was a crazy busy year. We had a lot going on. You were pregnant. So I was pregnant as well, yeah. And so he helped us, like, I couldn't pound in tea posts. Like, I would have loved to pound in the tea posts, but I couldn't. Um, so. Anyway, it's really nice because he kind of knows the system that we're going with and he is working on all the drip out here and the dahlia staking um, because there's You've just no- You've been giving him measurements though. Oh, <laughs> I've been giving him wrong measurements. I thought each rectangle was 45 by 65. So I did all of my math and all of my spacing based on having an extra five feet. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, so he would come out here and he's like, nothing works. This day, what, are you, what are you doing? And I'd tell him, I checked my math three times it's spot on <laughs> and it was spot on to the wrong measurement. So anyway, he keeps me, he keeps me lined out pretty well. Anyway, um, so there's no way that we could do all the projects that we do in film and put out videos every single day without help. 
Um, so Paul, huge thank you to Paul for all the work that he's done in this area. He keeps us afloat out here um, and it's just a huge blessing. So anyway, Dahlia Steaks, we've got uh, six rows here. These are spaced every seven and a half feet. We are, have nine T posts per row here. I also plant things like gladiolus and uh, anything tall that needs staking on these systems. So we will run some, uh, there's an airplane. It's not that loud though, is it? Okay. We'll run twine. Last year we did two feet and four feet. I think this year we'll probably do like maybe two and three feet. We didn't use the four foot. I don't know. Well, you planted incredibly I planted late, late last year too. So maybe two, three, and four. Maybe we'll have a three prong yeah. system here. Um, so you can see the drip tape right at the base. We will come in and aug holes for all the tubers every 12 inches. And then as the dahlias grow, which we will plant them on this side of the staking system because the wind goes this way. So if we can do it to where they're kind of like hitting the strings rather than wanting to fall into the aisle, that'll be perfect. And then we can stake them to the strings as they get taller and taller. We only had to stake a handful of them last, or tie a handful of them up last year. A lot of them were just strong enough. And this is closer to the two homes too. So like if you look around this way, this is where part of the subdivision is. And I'm hoping that that acts as a little bit of a wind block. And I'm also gonna be planting taller things like corn, um, sunflowers, millet, amaranth will be over here. So I'm kind of hoping it takes down some of the wind pressure. But I wanted to plant dahlias on this side because our new driveway, you can see it right there. And the dahlias seem to be one of the showiest things. So I thought it'd be really pretty to have them up close where we could see them. Right here, we had this space left. So we just ran the three rows of the drip tubing. So we'll plant something else right in here. Not sure what's gonna go in where exactly yet. Um, and then as we move this direction, I really like the width of this. At first I thought, oh, this is gonna be way too wide but it's so comfortable. And I know that like, if I plant something here, it's gonna come out and take up a couple feet. Same on the other side. So in the end, it'll probably look a lot more narrow, but it gives us the flexibility and it gives Aaron the ability to get in and out with the tractor. I probably won't be driving the tractor in here very much, but. Yeah, in order to be able to turn around to, yeah. to till. Yeah. Unless you were just doing one big giant space. Right. But since you're making small sections, you kind of need to be able to turn around. You know what though, you did it like, it's so funny the way your brain works and the way mine works. When I saw you tilling, like you did a pass and then you lifted up your tiller and did a pass in the other bed. I would have totally done like one rectangle. One at a time. <laughs> it would take... Well, I won't be able to do that in the future because um, if you do put a bench here in the corner, I won't be able, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to back in right here and start the tiller and go this way. Oh. Because I won't be able to just plow through the center area. Well, so it's, it's no big deal. I, I can do it. It'll just take like, a little bit like longer. That's like three passes. Yeah. So you can It'll... still do the bigger, biggest sections yeah. that same way. So yeah. that's nice. Okay. So as we're looking right down here, we're standing in the center. We are going to, and I think we're going to work on it this year. I think we're going to put in a little shed, like a little garden shed with, so here's my, what I'm envisioning. Um, I want double doors in the front that you can have open most of the time. It's not going to be a heated or air conditioned. We'll maybe build it in a way we can have the ability to do that one day. I doubt we'll ever utilize that, but have double doors open with a table right in the center, which the table we have in the gazebo from Plow and Hearth. I want to move that out here, have that right in the center with a beautiful light fixture over it so that I can cut flowers and that's where I can arrange them. Like listening to the <laughs> fountain, I can just like see it right now. And I think you could have like people over for dinner you know, and you could just have, cause like I'll have chairs out here too, and you can eat dinner in there or around there, like with the orchard trees and the beautiful cut flowers. And it just, I don't know. I have this like dream. Seems romantic to you. It does. So if you look straight down there, then you'll be looking, there'll be a 15 foot walkway and then the doors will be open. We uh, allowed enough space to where we were guessing we could do, cause the 15 foot walkway starts right here. We're guessing we could do about a 12 foot deep, 17 foot wide structure. And we're going to have it white, probably like our house, kind of have everything match, white with black accents. Totally lost my train of thought. I'm like white, getting white lost. With, I'm getting lost in the White the with thoughts. black accents. White with black accents. And then we, we will have water since we have to trench it over for the squares, rectangles anyway. We'll have a frost free put in about here-ish. And then we'll have electricity so we can run a light. Um, and then we'll keep any supplies that we use out here in the cut flower garden. I told Paul, like, keep a list. Anything that you use from the barn a lot. So we'll have a stack of biotone fertilizer. Um, we'll have, well, we might even keep that behind our fence. But 
Um, any tools that you use a lot, buckets for cutting, pruners, we're gonna have a section in this little space inside um, to house all the tools that we use out here all the time. And that way we're not going back and forth to the barn to get stuff. If we go 17 foot wide, we will still have two and a half feet on either side of each one of the uh, exterior trees canopies at maturity because these grow about 15 feet wide. So our camera quit unexpectedly there. So I'm not sure exactly where it ended up, but I was um, explaining that these fruit trees are semi dwarf. So at maturity, they'll be about 15 feet wide. So seven and a half feet on center. So seven and a half feet over, if we do a 17 foot structure, we'll still have about two and a half feet from the edge of that canopy to the edge of the building. Um, so we might go a little bit like maybe 15 feet or so. We wanted to make sure that everything was, you know, there was nice areas to walk around and such, but I think it would be beautiful. These are two apricot trees on either side of it to almost have them kind of like growing over it in a way. So I don't even, I don't, it will never happen even if we do 17 feet unless the trees love their life and grow a little bit bigger. Um, but I think it'll be a really fun look. So of course we've got our nine orchard trees here, which seeming, seemingly doing wonderful so far. I'm just com coming out here every few days and giving them some water. But you'll notice that we have some uh, fence posts in. So it should be done by this weekend. But what the idea is back here is that we will have a six foot. This is the six foot, right? I think so. Yeah. So these will all be cut down and there'll be caps on them. And this will be just a solid fence where we are going to just organize all of our bagged items and our extra supplies, like the tractor implements, will all be lined up back here behind this privacy fence. This will all be stained black, like our vegetable garden. And then it goes back 10 feet so that it's blocked from the view that side and also blocked from the view on this other side, if you look this way. Um, we've also talked about putting in a compost system on this end right here. So what we would end up doing is coming in and kind of like reinforcing and making some bins in here. I think it'd be perfect area to come and just, you know, have, I think we'll have plenty of space because this is 95 feet. 95 feet, if we did eight foot or 10 foot or whatever spaces where you could get your tractor in and get the forks in to mix up the compost and things, we may be able to have a really efficient area to do that. So anyway, that is maybe in the works, we'll see. Um, but I think it'll look really nice to create a room for this orchard because after the, the six foot privacy fence, it will come down to a picket like our vegetable garden. So it'll look like this really cozy little space. It'll create a room for the orchard and the little house and almost kind of for the cut flower garden, it'll kind of make it look compartmentalized. I do really well with boundaries. I like there to be something solid like that. And I've thought about adding, um, I haven't even talked to you, Erin, but we've got those beautiful Virginia creepers in down at um, oh, yeah. the garden center or like a honeysuckle, maybe both. But we'll probably do like clematis and Virginia well, creeper is not noxious here. It'll I probably should, be I shaded should... on this side of the fence um, because it'll be the north side of the fence. This is the north side. Right. So but I'm talking. Oh, you're talking on there. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking like maybe if we got one of the sensation honeysuckles and planted it here and kind of let it go on the, yeah, be cool. the fence a little bit or Virginia creeper is not something that takes over here. So I know many of you are probably like, don't plant the Virginia creeper. It takes over um, here. It's not really termed a noxious weed. We get them in at the garden center and people plant them all the time and they're beautiful for fall color. But anyway, that's what's going on in this space. We uh, one other thing, we'll have the 15 foot walkway here and then we're going to put up our high tunnel so you can see the bows right there, sitting on the ground. Now the high tunnel is 50 feet long. So we're gonna probably start it right back, well, I'm guessing like here-ish. So it won't go out the entire distance of the vegetable garden. You'll still be able to see the picket fence and that sort of thing. Um, but this is where we will house a lot of our plants for projects. So a lot of our shrubs and things like that will be housed in the high tunnel. And then this area will be planting area. We'll just have walkways through it. Um, with just whatever we feel like planting. Well, we can show the irrigation box really quick, what we're gonna well, yeah. have at the corner of each of the... Um, each one of the yeah, uh, rectangles? Rectangle, yeah. yeah. I don't really know what to call them. So when we have our landscape guy come and put in an irrigation box, this is basically what he does, if you can see in there. There's four, four zones, um, and some of them, we might only have him install two zones, and then uh, he brings them up. That's where we access. Like that. Mm -hmm. So like one inch pipes. And then basically we run it from there. We don't feel comfortable <laughs> doing... This part's a little bit too technical for, for me. 
Yeah, you I, could probably I feel like, out, you know, but... if you use the wrong stuff or you don't tighten it down or you're using the wrong fittings or whatever, I just don't want to be responsible for that. Um, but we can run the rest of it ourselves. Yeah. And our well is right here. This is the well that we uh, had. This is like the first thing we did on this property, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. So the well was put in. There's an in-ground, uh, in, in-well pressure tank, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, we might put a second high tunnel at some point and it'll kind of envelop this a little bit. It'll kind of go over it but it's pretty inconspicuous. So anyway, I mean, it's just shaping up so beautifully and with the fence going in um, by, they uh, they said it's the same people who built the ones, Eddie and Trisha, um, who built our first fence around our vegetable garden. They're doing this one, so it's gonna just mirror beautifully. Um, they said they're gonna have it done by the end of this weekend, I think. Maybe not stained, but up. I cannot wait to see what it looks like in this whole space. It's just making me feel so excited because, I mean, you guys know a lot of our garden is just kind of like, it's a mess right now. I mean, we're just taking out so much stuff. We're getting ready for the Hartley, which is on its way. We're getting ready at the end of this week. Chad's coming to pull out all the stuff in front of the house and the grass and all of that. And we're going to get ready to seed. So, and then Benny will come, we'll trench up. The whole thing will be trenched for new water lines. And then we'll seed new grass all the way up to the house. So to have one area feel like it's starting to button up and like come together, I'm like, okay, this is bringing me peace <laughs> because, you know. We'll so, have color very soon. It's a lot of chaos going on around here, but it's a lot of excitement, a lot of fun. I'm super thankful we get to do it. So anyway, just thought you guys would appreciate an update. And the next video you see from this space will probably be me planting some seeds and getting things going. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.